Good morning to those of you that are joining us on the YouTube channel and in person here at the church. Um, today our lesson is going to be given, going to be given by our own uh, Mr. Ken Harry, and he's going to be preaching on Psalm chapter 116, God is Compassion. Throughout the summer, Bob uh, Perez has challenged the church here in Santa Paula with a biblical series on entitled, God Is. We've studied that God is Father. God is hope. God is love. God is omnipotent. God is omnipresent. God is omnificent. God is just, and God is presence. Uh, gracious, I'm sorry. God is pre uh, gracious. Today we're going to be taking in consideration that God is compassionate. I'd like for you to turn to Psalms 103. <coughs> the psalmist David probably knew God just about as well as anybody outside of Jesus that came to this earth. And he wrote in verse 8 of the 103rd Psalm, God is compassion, compassionate and gracious. And he goes on and he says that he is not, he is slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve. You know, I appreciate Ramon's thoughts on the table this morning. It's not because of anything that we've ever done, because that table is there that we help, that we took part in this morning. It's because of God's grace his mercy and his compassion on us as his people, the people of this earth. He says, he does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. <clears throat> Got to get all my notes together here. <laughs> what does it really mean to be compassionate? I think each one of us have our own thoughts in regards to that, don't we? Webster's Dictionary tells us that Compassion is to be sympathetic, all right? It causes us to have a consciousness of others that are in distress around us. And together, it gives us a desire and a wanting deep inside our souls to help that person that has a problem. And that's called compassion. Compassion is deeper than any of these other thoughts that we might add to compassion, like empathy. It goes deeper than that, okay? It takes, as God says many times, it goes the second mile, compassion does. And we have a God that is full of compassion, okay? 
We have a God that is full of compassion. And he repeats this many times within the word of God. As a matter of fact, this scriptures that we just read here is mentioned, Bob, like Bob told us last week, nine different times in the Bible. Now, a lot of times we as human beings, we're a little thick-headed. If you're like Ken Airy, you're a little thick-headed and it, it takes a while for things to soak in. And, and maybe it might take those whole nine times that God has mentioned compassion as being a part of what God's makeup is for us to really understand that. And especially Ken. I don't know about you, but especially Ken. In Psalms 145, verses 8 and 9, got all these little stickers, so I don't want to lose any of them because I'll lose my train of thought, okay? But in Psalms 49, or 40, 145, and verses 8 and 9, it says, The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion for everyone that he has made. For every one of us that has ever set foot on the face of this earth, the Lord looks down from heaven with compassion on us. Okay? And the very makeup of God is compassion. Okay? That's, that's just part of his DNA. Okay, you know, we talk about DNA nowadays in our society and everything and where you came from and all this. Well, that's what makes up God. It's his great compassion for we as humans. He made us, he keeps us, sustains us, and one of these days he will take us home with him in the final end. Okay, and so he's compassionate. He wants us to, he wants us to, to be just like him as human beings here on the face of this earth. And so I want, to, I want us to think about in Exodus, the sixth chapter, it shows that because this is the, where God delivers us the Ten Commandments, okay? And in, in Exodus, the... Uh, turn to that, maybe if I can find it. Exodus, the 20th chapter, and verse 6. It says, God shows love to thousands of generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. So God is compassionate to all peoples, but he's especially compassionate to those that love him and keep his commandments and do his will. He goes... Again, the extra mile that I'm talking about, you know, that's part of compassion that God, as God wants to show it to us in this world, okay? And God shows his compassion to thousands of generations who love him and keep his commandments. Then in Exodus, the 34th chapter, in verse 36, it says, the Lord is compassionate and gracious and slow to anger, we just read that from Psalms, didn't we? But he, he re, this is one of the times that he repeats it again. He said that God is compassionate to thousands who love him and keep his commandments. The Lord is compassionate and gracious and slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. That means he goes, he's not only just compassionate, but he goes the extra mile, okay? He puts a little emphasis on his compassion to be a little bit stronger than just saying be empathetic. You know, James tells us about this in his book when he says, you look around and you see somebody that's in trouble and they come to you for help and you say, God bless you in your troubles. And then you just walk away. See, we think, well, that, that's the worldly compassion, isn't it? We just walk away from the one in trouble rather than to try to help them get out of the trouble that they're in and try to go that extra mile that God shows us that he goes and he would like for us to do the same thing. 
So when you see somebody in trouble, you go up to them and you ask them what the trouble is and you see their distress and everything in their life and the anxiety that they have in their lives and you say, well, God bless you. Don't just walk away. Put your arm around that brother or sister or that friend or that neighbor or whoever it is and say, what can I do now to help you in that distress, in that time of need, in that type time of sorrow or whatever it is. That's what God does for us every day, brothers and sisters, every day. Many of you know that I just had open heart surgery, but it's been four years now. And in that four years, God has been greatly compassionate for me. And he has kept me well and I've survived and I've been, and I'm standing before you in front of this group today preaching this lesson on compassion because of the compassion that he gave me. First Corinthians, the first chapter, verses two and three. Whatever compassion that you've been shown by God, show others that compassion and share that with them, okay? To help them along life's pathway. Psalms 119 and 156, says God is full of compassion. He's not just compassionate on a shallow level. He's, compa he's full of compassion. Bob and I went back here to look at the baptistry a while ago and we said, boy, this is a mess. And I looked down and I said, where's the water? Well, it's dissipated over the years. We, we haven't been filling it. It's not very full. And it, it, it turned a lot of, it's gotten dirty and everything else. We need to, what, take some compassion on that baptistry and, and clean it and then refill it and fill, fill it up so that people can be born again into God's family right here in this building and everything. We've had baptisms and that and, and this along, along the pathway and everything, but it, it, we've neglected that. And you know what? There's a lot of neglect in our society today with people. We've been, we have people in our society today that we live in have been totally neglected, haven't they? And God says, he looks down on them and he's taken pity on them. And that's why he set us here, didn't he, as Christians today? So that we can take compassion on it and be his servant to serve others and be compassionate for them. Show the compassion that God shows us. God's compassion is abounding. It never stops, does it? Thank God, I use those terms, but I say, thank God that his compassion has never stopped. Friends, day one, when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden and he looked at them and he went out, tried to find them, and they hid because of their sins. You know, we have people today that are hiding because of their sins. And God's looking for them. And he's looking for them through you and through me. Are we fulfilling that? Part of God's compassion is our compassion. Okay. God's compassion never depends on man. Not on man or his desires or even his efforts. God is still going to be compassionate, isn't he? At all times, no matter how we act, whether we say we want that compassion or we don't want that compassion, whether we want to give that compassion or we don't want to give it, it doesn't change God's compassion one iota because he is full of compassion. He's full of compassion. Romans, the ninth chapter, verses 15 and 16, tells us this, that we're to share God's compassion with our fellow mankind. God, our Father in heaven, his very name exudes compassion. His very makeup 
is compassion. <clears throat> words that go along with compassion that we think of many times, what are they? Can you think of some words? Somebody raise a hand, give me another word for compassion that you know it as. Pity. 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 Sympathy. Sympathy. Care. Caring. How about God's grace, his mercy, his kindness, his goodness, his loving care over us has already been presented. All these things come in the same category as what this compassion encumbers, okay? All these things, and they all come from who? From God the Father in heaven. At one time, God came down to this earth because why? Because of the compassion of the Father. He looked down and saw us as sinners down here on this earth and he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to come to this earth. And when Jesus came to this earth, what did Jesus show us? He showed us his compassion. You remember when the 5,000 came to Jesus? And they were out in the wilderness and they had no food, no drink, no water, no nothing. And Jesus told his disciples, go into town and buy some, get some food. And they said, we can't, we're too far away out here. And a little boy came by with what? Two fishes and five loaves. And God fed. He looked up on that crowd out there in the middle of the desert with compassion. How about the blind men? Two blind men that came to Jesus and the disciples tried to run them off. They're saying, Lord, heal us, heal us, heal us. And Jesus looked down on these two with compassion and he told his disciples and he healed them to bring those two to him and he healed them of their blindness. Why? Because of the compassion that Jesus had for mankind while he was living here on this earth. All right. As far as Jesus is concerned, I'm telling you, he didn't, the fruit didn't fall very far from the tree from the Father, did it? The Father has this compassion. He's full of compassion. He wants to see that everybody is taken care of here on this earth because we're his children. All of us are made in the image of God. And when Jesus came, he took on that very same compassion, didn't he? As the Father did. And Jesus himself looked around and he saw these people in need. He even looked around one time and he was standing on a hill and he looked over Jerusalem. And what did he do? And the love that was in his heart for the Jews and for the, the Jews of that time that was in Jerusalem. And he said, how I would have taken you under my wings. God had, Jesus had the same compassion as his father did. And he said, I would have taken you to my wings and I would have protected you, but you wouldn't listen to me. But you wouldn't listen to me. The word compassion makes up and portrays the very makeup of God the Father and Jesus Christ, his Son. Now we come to us. Jesus came to this earth and we celebrated his death, burial, and resurrection when we partake of the communion each Sunday morning. And we remember that great sacrifice that he gave for us because of his what? It says Jesus is full of compassion. Because of his compassion, he saw us and we were dying and taken away from God. And we were falling away from God. He wanted to bring us back to God. And through that compassion, he gave his life on Calvary's cross so that we might have a, the best life in this life now that we're living and the eternal life with him in the after a while. He said that he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. 
When we're born again into God's family and we put Jesus Christ on in baptism, he says in Acts 2.38 that you repent of your sin and you confess your sin, you're baptized into Jesus Christ and he gives us a special gift through his compassion. What is that? The gift of the Holy Spirit. And you know what that Holy Spirit's going to do, brothers and sisters? Just like God is compassionate, the Father in heaven right now, just as Jesus Christ came to this earth and he showed his compassion to all human beings, he says, now the Holy Spirit is going to leave you with the tasks. He's going to leave me with the task of what? Being compassionate. Just like the Father, just like the Son, just like the Christians today. And that's our duty in service to God. Okay? Are we fulfilling that duty? Are we shirking that duty? Do we accept that duty or do we shun it? I don't know. I'm asking you to answer that question. What happens if we accept that duty? We become compassionate, don't we? What if we shun it, though? What happens? Well, I gotta find it now. I got, I got so many papers here. I passed over a lot. Where is it? Where is it? Ecclesiastes. Okay. Nope. Jeremiah. Jeremiah the fifteenth chapter and verse six. Let's see what Jeremiah the prophet has to say about this deal about compassion. Okay. He says, "You have rejected me," declares the Lord. And you keep on backsliding. So I will lay hands. I will lay hands on you and I will destroy you. I can no longer show you my compassion. What a sad statement, isn't it, brothers and sisters? That there are people that reject the Lord Jesus Christ. At one time, Ken Airy rejected the Lord. He fought him tooth and toenail through the actions of his life. But somebody took compassion on me and taught me the word of God and gave me a choice to either act upon it and get out of that sinful life that I was in or to turn aside and keep backsliding further into work. Where, where does backsliding end up? In oblivion, in hell. But somebody saved my life by giving me God's word and let me act upon it. And I was born again into God's family. I was washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. I rose from that watery grave of baptism with all my sins washed away by the blood of Jesus because of his great compassion for me. And thank God. God, he had a father that had that same compassion. God's compassionate. Jesus is compassionate. And God goes out of his way in the New Testament for us to be compassionate, doesn't he? Let's look at a couple of other verses there. Would you turn to uh, Ephesians 4th chapter? <clears throat> Ephesians, the fourth chapter and verse 32. Or, excuse me, I'm sorry. Yeah, verse 32. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, among, along with every form of malice. Be kind, compassionate to one another, Forgiving one another, just as Christ forgave you, brothers and sisters. And then he goes on down in the fifth chapter and he says this, be imitators of God. Now, God the Father was the first compassionate one. He sent his son, God Jesus Christ, to this earth. 
And he was what? An imitator of God the Father, wasn't he? Now, God the Father, through Jesus Christ the Son, and Jesus Christ gives us the Holy Spirit in baptism, he says, be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly beloved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved you and gave himself for you as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. God was our sacrifice. We need to be a sacrifice for somebody here. That means go out of your way to be compassionate, to show compassion, not just say, oh, I love you, brother, and then go on. Right now, we have people within our congregation that have, that are not necessarily, that you know out here in this world, okay, that have COVID. You say, well, that's like leprosy. Stay away from me. Stay away from me. You know, you're going to walk on the other side of the street. Yes, maybe we could walk on the other side, but you know, maybe while we're walking on the other side of the street, we can say, we can put some money out there and so they can go to the doctor or they can get be fed or something like that. How many times have we gone out and reached out to those that have COVID in our society? Even though it's a, ooh, I'll catch it. Well, you know what? By Lord God's grace, I haven't had it, but I know those within this very congregation right now that have had it. And by his grace, they're here today. But isn't that what you can say, those of you that have had it? By his grace and by his mercy and because of his great compassion for us as his children, you've overcome it. And God wants us to help all those that are in the world that are fallen under those dire circumstances also, doesn't he? And that's what he says here. Be imitators of God, therefore, as God, as dearly beloved children, and live a life just as Christ loved you and gave himself for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice. How sacrificial are we? God is sacrificial to the Father. Jesus was sacrificial because he gave his own life. Are we giving our life through compassion for others today? I'm just asking the question, but you're going to have to answer to God one of these days on how you answer that question. God loves you. I love you. And God said that he wants us to love those around us. Not just by word, but by deed. By deed. Going the extra mile. Just as James said, Somebody's in need and you come up to him, you pat him on the back. Oh, brother, I feel so far for you. Goodbye. I don't know. You. No. He says, that's not love. That's not compassion. That's not grace. That's not brotherly kindness. That's not goodness. But brothers and sisters, it's something else. Just like Jeremiah points out. We don't want to lose the compassion that God has for us. And we can lose it if we go the other route. And he warns us of that. God loves you and I love you. And God wants nothing but the best for us. Are you living up to your part of the bargain? That's how I want to end this lesson today. Are you as compassionate as you should be? If not, be a little more compassionate. <laughs> okay? And that goes for Canary too. God bless you all into the hearing of his word. Thank you.